two momentous things in the Bible, in prophecy, must be fulfilled before end time prophecies can be fulfilled. Number one, first Israel must be a nation. Well, May 14th, 1948, Israel was reborn as a nation. And by the way, our former president aggressively, along with allied nations, making Jerusalem recognized in the world as capital. Do you remember what the date happened to be when that was official? May 14th, 2018. 70 years to the day. Next time somebody says, ah, no prophecies have ever taken place in my lifetime. It's just because you're not listening to the right prophecy teacher. Secondly, the Jewish people must return to Israel. As I've already covered, and I have studies on that, I hope at time you'll go and and search it out. It's it's fascinating to me. I I don't understand how people can be Christians and never look at Bible prophecy or never find a trusted Bible prophecy voice. When I was a kid, my father used to bring, uh, there were two in particular, but my father every year brought evangelists into the church who were Bible prophecy preachers and teachers. And as a kid, it fascinated me. It gave me a faith as a child to know that the Bible was not hocus pocus. It was not a religious fairy tale. It was separated from all other world religions by its prophetic content. And so they were dispersed in AD 70 by Titus in the Roman Empire and then in AD 135. And there they remained until... May 14th, 1948. In Ezekiel chapter 37, be sure to include this in your notes, verses 1 through 14, that classic passage in the Old Testament declaring the vision of the valley of dry bones is a prophecy of Israel's restoration. And the reason why it is the valley of dry bones, when you read it, do it in your devotions, The dry bones are restored in stages, which was a prophecy that Israel will be restored in stages. Some trace the beginning of this return to 1871, when just a small group of Jews at risk of death felt called by Yahweh in prayer to return to Israel. By 1881, it grew to about 25,000 Jewish people that had settled there. By 1914, about 80,000 people had gathered there. By 1939, there were 450,000 gathered there. After World War II and the atrocities of Hitler's Holocaust brought attention worldwide to the plight of the Jews, it began to accelerate. And on May 14, 1948, the Israeli Declaration of Independence is made in Tel Aviv and a few hours just before the British mandate expires. And at midnight, the British mandate of Palestine is officially terminated and the state of Israel is officially recognized. And do you know who the very first nation was minutes after that declaration? Openly declared Israel as a nation, the United States of America. And historically, we have always been their greatest friend and greatest ally. One of the reasons why this nation is going to hell in a handbasket is because we now have politicians that have greater allegiances to Muslim oil than to the nation of Israel. And the Bible said, I'll bless those that bless them and I'll curse those that curse them. Just for the record, don't get all uptight. I hate politics. People always ask me, are you a Democrat or Republican? I am a born-again Christian, and this is my book of allegiance. My allegiance to God is greater than any allegiance. I love the red, white, and blue. If they took 63-year-old ugly men, I'd fight for this nation all day long. But I am here to tell you, I have no hope in the White House. My hope is in the Holy House and Jesus Christ and His eternal Word.